streaming live. Going live. Well, here we are. Already? Again? Elaine Marilakos Edelson with Astrology Mojo and Transformational Astrology want to help you get your mojo back. Okay, so there's so much going on. It's been so busy. And yet, you know what I find a lot of times in when there's a lot of retrograde planets, sometimes we get lost. And it's just like time is different. There's a, the perception of time is so different. And I find that to be true when, when Mercury is retrograde, especially. And not so much when Venus is retrograde. I, I'm not, the perception of time isn't so off for me, but when Neptune is retrograde like it is now, and it is going direct on uh, November 24th. And, you know, uh, we're heading into, we're in a Venus retrograde, we're heading into a Mercury in retrograde, and we came out of a Saturn retrograde and Pluto retrograde, so that the the more intense factors are not feeling as intense. There's like a period of, oh, phew, let's take a break. And and now with all the voting and all that uh, phone calls and uh, polling and blah, blah, it feels like it's building up again. <laughs> like everything does, it goes in waves, right? And that's what Pluto's all about, the waves, how you get lost. Pluto, interesting fact, um, I'm sorry, not Pluto, Neptune. Oh, I just had my own lost moment. Like Ray Milan, lost weekend, no, rats crawling through the wall. No, <laughs> that would never be me having a, a, an addicted weekend nightmare. Um, but Neptune, I, se I seem to find that different planets and what they represent, and remember the planets don't do anything to you, they represent what your timing is all about. When the planets make a move, you feel it. When you make a move, the planets reflect that on their ecliptic in the heavens as they rotate around the constellations. And so that tells me what time it is, uh, depending on the person and what chart I'm doing or what I, who I'm doing a reading for and what that means. So with uh, Venus already retrograde, I've already had some amazingly wonderful and very powerful, subtle, but very pow powerful awarenesses regarding my own feminine energy and regarding the women in my life. So it's been profound. And my husband heard me tapping in the shower the other day. I was like doing my EFT tapping. And he said, you okay? He goes, what are you doing? I'm tapping. And anytime I'm, I'm tapping, it's usually because I'm in the middle of something emotional. I want to let, let it go. And he's like, are you okay? And I said, yeah, I'm great. I just had a realization. It was so subtle. It was almost like a whisper. It was so subtle. And I thought, I'm going to tap on it right now and bring it up. And it had to do with relationships with women and as it related to my own feminine energy. So I want you to realize that sometimes the retrogrades are not they're not, they don't come at you with a punch. Although Mars retrograde might, things feel, again, if you were born in a Mars retrograde, that's when things speed up for you. Uh, but with the Venus retrograde, I'm finding that things are more subtle. And I've already had some wonderful re reconnections and reacquaintances with women from my past. And it's been great. It's been amazing. And it's been really validating which is a wonderful thing. So today we're going to be talking about, well, we, we're going to talk again about Mercury in retrograde, but we're going to be talking about Neptune in retrograde. And what, first of all, let me show you, what does Neptune look like? Well, came to the right place. I will show you. Here's what Neptune looks like. And here's what Neptune retrograde looks like. The RX uh, symbolizes the retrograde. And when Neptune, the planet that represents mysticism, illusion, um, on the plus side, I would say dreams and intuition, spirituality, your dedication, your piety to religion or to a specific uh, service, 
you know, everyone's here to serve, but with, with wherever your Neptune is, you see where you serve the most and to other people and to what demographic, especially. Uh, it's the nebula. Neptune represents the things that aren't fully formed or the things that are, are like the disappearing act. If you know Pisces or Pisces rising signs, they can be there and, you know, you can paint with them, draw, watch movies, but then suddenly they're gone and you're, you know, you wonder where they go. And then they come back after they traverse the seas of their consciousness and their universe and they come back and say, hey, where were you? And you say, um, I've been, I'm right here. <laughs> I've just been right here. <laughs> haven't left. Um, and so the plus side of Neptune can be really creative, very poetic, really beautiful. Now with anything on earth, we have what's called a dichotomy. And a dichotomy is a word I used to use every other paragraph when I first started out doing this work. And my husband and I made a pact. I shook his hand and he said, please promise me you will stop using the word dichotomy. <laughs> and I did for about 10 years. I'm bringing it back. You see how retrogrades bring back the past? I'm bringing back the word dichotomy. Dichotomy is something that is just very extreme in nature. It's it's just, um, you know, there's the this and the that, the here and the there, the up and the down, the back and the forth. And that's what the dichotomy is with every planet, every person, everything on this, on this earth has a dichotomy. It has an opposite. And so Neptune's opposite of that beautiful dream state. It's very sensual. It's, it's soft. It doesn't want anything harsh. Uh, it's, it's, it deals with intuition and let's go have a vision quest and, and do something, you know, let's paint sand play and finger painting, whatever, <laughs> anything you want to do with Neptune. Now, Neptune has a hardcore opposite and that is medical information dealing with vision seriously your eyes now I know in um, a lot of texts in astrology and I like to research there's so many versions of everything in astrology depending on who you're talking to and what system they have studied or are prone to uh, want to use and where Mars the planet that represents action uh, it also deals with the head and the eyes and the blood system and the nervous system, as well as infections and fevers. But I find that Neptune, anytime a person is born with Neptune on the ascendant or in the sixth house, uh, but especially on the ascendant, I find, or when it's transiting the ascendant, I find that the vision is in question. I mean, the actual optometry uh, you know, this is when you have to go see the ophthalmologist, or you might, our, our, child had eye surgery and Aaliyah was born with Neptune right on the ascendant and uh, eye surgery was at the age of five and we're looking at possible eye surgery again in a couple of years if things don't correct themselves so different parts of the body are in in view with Neptune and it has a lot to do with the uh, the mucous membranes in the body, the fluid, also water. And so water systems in your house when you're having a Neptune transit or the lack of water in your neighborhood or in your body, uh, the water in your eyes, the tear, tear duct systems. I find that Neptune also has a lot to do with not just the spiritual vision it, it ideally it's the ideal vision that you want to have but the spiritual vision that you have versus also the eyesight vision so let's just say you're in denial and you're doing drugs and you get high a lot or you drink a lot or you're you've dulled your emotions with nicotine uh, no judgment on any of this because here's a phrase that I say to my clients and to I say to myself anytime I'm ready to judge someone negatively uh, or I have the inclination to go hey what the you know um, I was you yesterday I am you today or I will be you tomorrow I want you to adopt my phrase I was you yesterday I am you today or I will be you tomorrow and this 
this lessens the need for that negative judgment and to open up a clearer channel for understanding someone else's point of view or position or situation. I know a lot of people, you know, will complain about their lives and that can be, a, um, that's a, one of the negative Neptunian things. Hi, Star. Um, and when people complain a lot because they get stuck in the victim mode, Neptune is great at becoming a martyr on the downside. And the upside, it's the, it's the revolutionary. That you wouldn't think that about um, a Neptune energy, but it is a spiritual revolution. But on the downside, the more mundane, um, esoteric is a higher vibe and the mundane is the lower vibe. And the, the mundane is the victim or the addicted person, or the very needy person, or, or that energy that says, I just, I can't see, I just, I can't see. You know, I can't see myself doing that. I can't see why they would do that. I don't understand why, you know, just think of all the time. I just picture, you know, comics. We know a lot of comics because my husband's a former stand-up. And I just picture a lot of uh, comics that I've met or seen in my life. And I just hear them imitating, you know, old Jewish grandmothers or old Italian grandmothers. And they go, what? The six plates of pasta is not enough. I stayed up all night to make this for you. You know, so there's like this, this guilt factor in uh, the Neptune energy, and it can be very passive aggressive. So we want to be aware right now that Neptune as it is in retrograde motion, what does it represent? It means that we are, at this point in time, looking to clear out those things that stop us from having an ideal clear vision. Now, if it's actually about your glasses or your eyesight, well, there you go. It might also be about the judgments that you have based on your needs that weren't met as a child and now you, you know, have a whining, complaining persona somewhere in the back of your head, which we all have. It's either the victim or the perpetrator when we go to extremes, right? So, but the, the person in between in the middle is that person who has more compassion. That's the higher vibe, more esoteric vibe of, of Neptune. And we want to adopt that. So what I want you to look at now is what is your ideal vision in life right now? And to pick one thing that it might be. And it can be to have better health or to have more intimate relationships or to have a better time uh, creating a visual. Maybe you're an artist or a writer. Uh, maybe it's about playing more or looking at your career and saying, how can I change or alter something so that I have more fun, so that I'm I'm creating from the nebula. You know, on the downside, oh, I got this picture. It's awesome. On the downside, um, a really, uh, hi, Kate, a really hard Neptune phase, especially when Neptune is direct, not so much when it's retrograde. We're retrograde Neptune right now until November 24th. And so what's going to happen between now and then, coupled with the Mercury in retrograde that we're in the pre-phase of, we're about to head into, we're in the Venus in retrograde, so we combo all these things. It's your perception your uh, ability to allow flow, that's the Venus, and to, it doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman or non-defined <laughs> gender, to take that part of you that is able to allow and to allow the perceptions that stop you from creating an ideal vision and put it all on the table. What can you do with this information? What, what do you want to do? with your ideal vision. What would you like? And some people say, I don't know what I want to create. So while Neptune is retrograde, this is a great time to explore um, ideology. What do you truly believe? Um, what about uh, spirituality or uh, creativity, poetry, painting, drawing, singing, dancing, music, film, things that are the micro and macrocosms of life are in every television show, every movie ever made or will be made. And so when you look at um, the downside, you have to ask yourself first, am I addicted to anything or to anyone who is addicted? 
Am I addicted to being needy or victimized? Am I uh, on the downward spiral because I don't have a vision? If I don't have a clear vision, I can't go to that place with uh, systematic tools that will help me get there. And what would you like to create? I'm creating charts for people and giving readings and helping them to clear the decks for their vision. And also I am writing historical fiction novels. And I'm also creating uh, an astrology masterclass for people to learn how to use astrology as a transformational tool, not a throwaway from a magazine, because it's one way of looking at life, right? So when I look at Neptune and your ideal vision, oh, this is the image that I found. I thought it was so cool. And it's just so telling. Okay, if you don't know where you're going, this is what a blurred vision looks like, right? It's raining. You can't see very well. The signs are obscured. Um, you don't know which direction. Where's the exit? You know, and you're, <laughs> you're all stressed out driving like this. So, well, when you act as if life is a freeway, and you're zooming along the road and you have no idea what exit, that's a Jersey term, right? Right, Kate? <laughs> Jersey term, what exit? <laughs> um, when you, you don't know where you're going uh, and you're going there fast, then you're headed for mm, what we would call disaster. Uh, I want to talk about some words. Uh, I was going to have a whole talk on words, magical words and amazing words. Disaster is a word that is Latin and it literally means away from the stars. That's what disaster means. Disease, Latin, away from ease. That's what it means. So I want you to think about what is disaster for you and in your life that is the antithesis of your ideal vision. What is the opposite of that? Another word that I love is, uh, it was made popular and famous by J.K. Rowling when Voldemort used um, with his wand. And you know what? I, I don't know where my wand went. I have my wand somewhere. <laughs> I have a wand. Anyway, uh, when uh, Voldemort would say avracadavra, and it would be used to harm or to kill. Well, the actual definition, it's an old Hebrew word, two words, avracadavra, and it means I create as I speak. So think about that. That's very magical. That's very Neptunian. Uh, Neptune also deals with horses. So if you are an equine healer or someone who loves to ride horses for healing purposes, this is a wonderful time to reconnect as well with horses or think about how you'd like to move forward um, with equine healing. But, uh, okay, I just distracted myself. So what's, what's the other thing that we're looking at? Um, there is There was a culture in Babylonia, pre-Babylonian culture called the Akkadians, A-K-K-A-D-I-A-N-S. And the Akkadians didn't last more than 1,500, maybe 2,000 years. Um, but for a concentrated era of about a thousand years, the Akkadians, before they broke up and were absorbed by other cultures, the Sumerians, the Babylonians, and some Greeks, um, what they did was they were a star-based system. They, they used astrology and astronomy, which were, they coincided and they were the same at the time. The Akkadians had a language that dealt with how you proceeded in life, what based on your vision. So uh, a very popular word today, uh, also Hebrew, uh, that people know and can use, which typically means congratulations, is mazel tov. And hi, Nikki. And mazel tov is um, distilled down now to mean, you know, oh, what a blessing or Congratulations. Well, the original definitions uh, of the word, the mazel tov, there are two words, mazel tov, literally means may you have correct positioning of the stars. Does that blow your mind? I think that's so wild. And that comes from the culture and the civilization called the Akkadians that were, that we don't know why they dispersed and were absorbed by other cultures, Babylonians, Sumerians, some of the Greeks, and um, and the 
Islam nations as well as the Hebrew nation. And so what happens to words over time, uh, this I find fascinating. I want you to be really aware of the words that you use because when you're in a lost place, that's the downside of Neptune energy. When you're in a lost place, you will use the same phrases over and over and over again. So even though Mercury is the planet that represents communication, I want you to be aware of, of Neptune as the subconscious level of communication. Just like Mars physically represents the head and the eyes and the blood system. When you're having a Mars transit, you might have an eye infection or uh, it doesn't mean that the planet's doing it to you. It just means that you're not caring for your body in such a way that this is where you amass bacteria or this is where you're having difficulty. But when Neptune, when you have a Neptune transit, whether it's retrograde Neptune or direct Neptune, you will have issues dealing with vision. Now, again, as I said earlier, is that vision physical? Do you need to see the optometrist? Or do you need to get readers? Um, or do you need uh, blue tech? Like these glasses are uh, a few years old, but they are blue tech. I don't know if you can see because it's not on white, but oh, here we go. They have a champagne color to them and they block out the blue rays that are harmful from computers. And because I'm at the computer all day, I wear my blue tech lenses and they protect my vision. Now, the other type of vision, as I was saying, is your spiritual vision, your subconscious, non-conscious vision. What do you want to create in this world? How would you like to move forward? What is your vision? And that vision can be something that is very practical. But remember, all things begin in the nebula. And I'm not quoting anything from Star Trek or anything. Excuse me. <laughs> all creation begins in your nebula. Isn't that cool? And the nebula is um, all the energy that is forming. It's just swirls of energy that are forming inside of you. And before they can become concrete and you can act on them and make them a real endeavor, you know, you want to write a book, you start thinking about, oh, gee, um, I wonder if it would be, oh, and then you go through all the ups and downs of, oh, no one would read it, or I don't know how to write, or I don't have the money, and then I, all the not enoughs come into play. And then you turn around and you say, but I really would love to write a book. And then you take some classes, you know, then now you're acting on uh, creating that ideal vision. Uh, the same thing with anything you're doing, any endeavor in life is about you learning how to implement your ideal vision. And so before November 24th, we will still be in the Neptune retrograde. That is the perfect time to discover your nebula. That is the perfect time to think, how would I like to create as I speak, Avra Kadavra? How would I like to have my own vision of and fill in the blank. And then as that happens, we'll, we will also then be in as, as Venus is just coming out of retrograde and into direct motion, you're, you're seeing where you allow or disallow romance, finances, love, uh, self-love especially, and uh, aesthetics. You see where you allow or disallow those topics. And then November 16th begins the actual Mercury in retrograde through December 6th. And so, but the pre-phase is now. So then your perceptions start to change on top of what you allow or disallow. And then on top of that is the Neptune retrograde, which is going to be going direct on November 24th. And that is about your ideal vision. So all your perceptions are changing now. Women are playing a huge key role, whether they are on this earth, whether they have passed away, whether because they're still here or with us and energy wise. Uh, or whether you read something uh, written by a female author, or whether you uh, are listening to this, and I am a woman, and it impacts you in some way, or whether you look into your own perceptions and judgments about being who you are, being a woman, being feminine, having feminine energy, um, altering your, your ego identity with, uh, looking at your gender, uh, and looking at the role that you have. I know a lot of women who 
as the roles are reversing, I know a lot of women who take care of their mates, uh, either not just emotionally, but financially, and or pick up the slack. So is that a role that you would like to continue? So what's your ideal vision, combining all these elements? So to just keep it really simple, remember the phrase, anytime you want to start judging someone or a situation in a negative way that puts harm into the world, remember Neptune is an energy that on the high end, it's the ideal vision that represents the most beautiful, poetic, spiritual way of being. It's poetry in motion. And to stick with that, you want to stick with my phrase, um, I was you yesterday. You want to use this phrase. Remember, just use a phrase anytime you're ready to be negative or ready to put something into the world that can cause harm. I was you yesterday, I, I am you today, or I will be you tomorrow. Because what that does, it's put, it puts you in the position. It's like, uh, you know, walk a mile in someone else's shoes. But you really do it. When you say that phrase, and you're watching someone on television, or across the dining room table, or at the supermarket, wherever you are, you're watching someone and you're ready to judge and you're thinking, what is this woman talking about? She's crazy. She's cray cray. You know, she's Looney Tunes, or I wish this person would just shut up because I need to get back to work and she's been chattering and at the bank line and I need to cash my check. You know, so wherever you are and there's a negative thing roiling around in your body. Remember Neptune represents the idealist on one side uh, with ideal vision or the victim. And the victim can be a complainer and a whiner and someone who's addicted to, ah, uh, you know, uh, it's never going to happen, never going to get my needs met. Uh. And that's the person or the energy that inflicts guilt. Guilt is, um, is a non-issue. We don't need to be putting guilt into the world. There's enough of that already. <laughs> don't you think so? Right. <laughs> ah, okay. So. I was you yesterday, I am you today, or I will be you tomorrow. Therefore, I will have more compassion for you. Now, it doesn't mean I have to help you or listen to you complain for years on end. It means I will understand. You can still set a healthy boundary, right? You can still set a healthy boundary, and that's the thing we want to do. Healthy boundaries are okay. Uh, Coming at somebody sideways coming at somebody um, by holding it in, holding it in, holding it in, and then suddenly you're just like, I've had it, you know, and you lose your cool. Yeah, we don't, you know, we all do it. We've, I was you yesterday, I am you today, or I will be you tomorrow. And I understand why we do it and why we hold it. But as you explore who you are, to, be, to create that ideal vision, to actually become what it is that you are creating, avracadavra, I create as I speak, and looking at clearing up the, the negatives in your life by um, listening more to your dreams and moving away from addiction. Uh, you know, I used to smoke cigarettes. That was really hard. And what I discovered was why I smoked cigarettes. Uh, it became an addiction, but then once I stopped and I was very conscious about stopping and letting that go, you know, this was 22 years ago and letting all this go. And I realized it, the nicotine stopped me from feeling because I felt so much all the time it numbed my feelings. And that's, that was my realization of why did I smoke? And then I let that go. And I healed my body. And I'm still healing my body, I make sure that I'll take care of my lungs, and take whatever herbs or vitamins I can take to assist that healing. Um, But I want to look at why, what prompts me toward addiction? That's the question you want to ask yourself. Why am I addicted to if you think you are? And sometimes we get lost in things and we want to get lost. And that's a Neptune energy. We want to get lost in things like the show Lost. I've seen it seven times. (laughs) I love that show. Um, But 
when you don't want to deal with something, it's okay to check out for a little while. It's like you've had enough of something. It's just too much. You just, you know, you put on the TV, you watch a bunch of movies, you binge watch a TV show. Okay. You escape. Neptune is famous for escapism. But eventually you need to come back to some form of systematic approach toward healing the thing that you think needs healing or whether it's a relationship, your health, uh, career, business, your whatever the relationship is to money, to wealth, health, passion, or purpose. Whatever your relationship is, it stems from you and your beliefs. So dig deep while Neptune is still retrograde and, and meditate more. Now is the time to take creative classes and to remember that, you know, people will say, get, you know, think beyond the box or think outside the box. Ultimately, my friends, there are no boxes. And, and that's the, the mind trip of Neptune. There are no boxes. And so watching movies like Source Code, which is awesome because it puts your brain in a different possibility. Like what are the possibilities and, and what's, what, how can we get beyond where we've been stuck because of victimization, because of abuse, because of uh, sorrow or grief or guilt? You know, we want to start forgiving ourselves and then let go of the forgiveness because there's so much I have to forgive this person for because you have a stack. You have like the scroll. <laughs> you have the scroll. You whip it out and go in counseling. Oh, yeah, you did this. You did this. You did this. You did that. Okay. Eventually, you have to realize that everybody in your life is there because of you. Oh, another mind-blowing concept, right? Okay. <laughs> Listen, to book a private session with me, you can go to the book now the blue book now button. I'm still uh, giving Venus retrograde uh, 30 minute sessions and they are awesome and people are loving them and having massive realizations. And I usually go a little over. Shh, don't tell anyone. That's just between you and me. Because I really want to make sure people get what they need. So uh, let's say we're going to be back talking more about the combination of the words that I mentioned earlier, as in the old ancient words that are now returning um, so that we can actually use them. And that mazel tov, right, used to be blessings or congratulations, but it actually technically means may you have correct positioning of the stars. Wow, that was a mind blower when I discovered that. Also, uh, avracadavra, create, I create as I speak. And we're going to start looking at extremes um, in the next couple of uh, live events that I'll be doing. Because we're coming up on a Mercury in retrograde, I'll be talking more about that. And I'm just going to grab my, my, um, my calendar. The temperature finally dropped here, and I'm just loving it. I can wear two layers now without sweating. Yay, I'm so happy. Now, let's see, when shall I return? I don't even know what today is. Oh, there it is. Okay. So, uh, folks, I will be back uh, in three days. So look for me then on Thursday. I shall be back. And we'll be talking more about the planet uh, Mercury going retrograde and also about uh, what might benefit you with certain exercises to do during these retrograde dense periods. And remember folks, in transformational astrology and helping you to get your mojo back, it's not about what the planets are doing out there. It's about what you are creating in here. It's all reflected in a chart. You know, here's a chart. I was doing one for Aaliyah for her five point Venus star. And I was doing all these calculations yesterday, and I can see based on, even though Ali is only 19, I can see based on what's happened so far, uh, how Venus energy in Aaliyah is going to emerge in the near future. And so that's fascinating, right? So we want to look at who you are, who you are becoming, and why. What's your ideal vision? All right. We'll be back. Be sparkly. Thank you for being here. 
be all that you can be. That sounded like a commercial, right? <laughs> be sparkly. Be you. Be well. I wish you peace.